Hi again, this is Marcel Papineau with Intelligent Design Engineering with another video tip. This time we're going to be dealing with load bearing and non load bearing walls. It's a common question, definitely for new home buyers that get into to some older homes. You know, back then they used to have rooms very compartmentalized and now we, nice, we like nice open spaces. So this is a perfect example because there's three walls that they want to remove and they're wondering is it load bearing, is it not? Can they go ahead and take the sledgehammer and get rid of it or not? And that's where we're here to help. In this, uh, in this example here, we're in the living room, we're just coming from the entrance here, and we want to remove this entire wall. They want to make this living room bigger. Uh, so is it load bearing? Is it not load bearing? Can they take it out? We don't know. In this particular case, we got another wall here that they want to remove. You know, is this a load bearing wall? Are they both load bearing walls? How do we know? Um, so this is one wall, and then the other one, which you'll see here is a closet wall, which you'll probably see me through here, is a closet wall separating the two. Can we take that out and make this room bigger without any problem? So again, it's one of those, those requests we get every day. Is it low bearing? Is it not low bearing? How do we find out? In these particular cases, he's going to take this wall out. So it's important to have an engineer because not only are we going to tell you if it is or is not load bearing, we're also going to let you know what size of beam do you need in order to create that space. So the next step is to go upstairs, figure out what's coming down onto these walls. And uh, so that we can one, calculate the beam or just let you know, yes, go ahead, take the sledgehammer, it's ready to go. So we'll go up in the attic now. All right, so now we're up in the attic. Um, this is basically where we're gonna see what is bearing on that wall. Just to give you a point of reference, this is the wall down below that was separating the living room. And they were wondering, hey, is this a low bearing wall or not? So before I get into that, just a little bit of terminology. Uh, when you're dealing with structure, the, with the joists that form the ceiling are called ceiling joists, and that's what these are right here. They're the horizontal member that goes across the ceiling, okay? The other one is a rafter. Rafter is obviously is supporting your roof. That's the what's on, it's on the diagonal. And these are just braces that are bracing the rafter, okay? So looking at this wall, is it a load-bearing wall or not? Well, we see that my roof is being braced down directly onto this wall. So yes, it is a, a load bearing wall. And it is also that these joists, you see how they're spliced here? In splice, what I mean by that is that they're cut and they're actually bearing on top of this wall, okay? So it's not like my ceiling joist goes from the end of the house all the way across. They actually have to splice them or cut them and bear them on the wall. So this one here is, is load bearing. Going on to this next one, same thing, this is that other side of the hallway where we decided, hey, are both walls bearing? Well, the same thing happens here. Ceiling joists are cut, and not only just for this attic, but they're actually cut all the way through here. I know you see boards, so it's a little bit harder to see. My rafters are also bearing on this. So yes, those are the, that's the load that I'm gonna have to try and calculate to figure out, okay, what kind of beam do I need to be able to support all this weight so that it spans over your opening? Now the last one, you probably need a flashlight here. This is the this is the closet wall. So what you want to look for is the ceiling joists are actually running parallel with the wall. And in fact, if you look down here, you can see this plate, this little two by eight plate that sits on top of the wall is just there so they can fasten the sheetrock to it but there's nothing bearing on it. Everything's parallel to it. There's no roof on it. Uh, very common things that you'll see some plumbing lines come right through it, some vent lines back there. I'm not sure if you saw that, but that's what I'm looking for. In this case here, that wall can be blown out. You know, just make sure that you're making sure that your plumbing's going. <laughs> there's no plumbing in the wall before you go ahead and start getting uh, sludge hammer happy. But um, those are the things to look for. So in this particular case, yes, we have the joists that come across. They're load bearing walls. This one here, non-low bearing, go for it. All right, so we're back down in the living room here. So we've determined that this wall is load bearing. The other side of the hallway is also load bearing, and the closet wall is non-low bearing. Now in this particular case, we have an attic above. It makes it a lot easier to figure that out. That's not always the case. You know, if you got a two-story structure, you can't see because all your flooring is there. So just a couple tips to look for. Again, I would Consult a professional, make sure you know you have an engineer out there to make sure that it is load bearing, but just something to consider if you're just wondering, um, you know, is it gonna be feasible or not. Look at the, the, the direction of the room, size of the room. You know, in this particular case, this is 11 feet this way, and I'm 18 feet this way. 
So there's a good chance that the joists, or the ceiling joists, are going this direction, okay? And uh, if you can't see that, if you have hardwoods upstairs, a lot of times, you know, there should be installing hardwood floors perpendicular to the joists, you know, they're cross direction. So if this was, if I was upstairs and I'm looking down, my Hardwoods are going this way, so there's a good chance that my joists are going this direction, perpendicular to it. It's not always the case, but it's just another something to, to consider and look at. Um, and then finally, if you wanted to, uh, you know, cut holes, of course, that's the most important thing to do. Make sure it's not barren, but if you had a wall that's in between, this one gets a little bit more professional. Are we dealing with a 5 foot span or a 15 foot span? You know, what size floor joists are we dealing with? Can it span that far? So those are the things that we look at, um, you know, as a professional. So again, just to wrap this video up, I hope it was helpful. Uh, again, consult an engineer before you go ahead and start cutting studs out.